All right, um, I'd like to start uh, by um, thanking Tyler Dorsey uh, for everything he's done for us over the last two years and Daniel Hamilton uh, for this year. Uh, those guys uh, were extremely hardworking, uh, good guys to have in the locker room. And, um, you know, unfortunately, we weren't able to get both of them to teams to give them a bigger opportunity to play. But, um, you know, we hopefully got Tyler a place where he's going to have an opportunity to get some minutes here the rest of the season. But I want to thank both of those. And with that, we'll um, start with your questions. Travis, of course, there were a lot of rumors that teams were reaching out to you about possibly Torian Prince, Jer Jeremy Lin, or Dwayne Dedman. So what was your thought process about keeping them? Or what were the offers from different teams, if there were offers? Well, obviously not going to get into offers and different conversations that we had with different teams. Um, I would say going into this trade deadline, our objectives were the same as they were day one when I got here. Um, you were, we were going to look to accumulate assets if we could. We were going to look to maintain our financial flexibility in the future. Um, but, you know, we listened to a whole bunch of different offers. Um, but at the end, um, we just never really found anything that met those two major objectives to us. Uh, on top, when you couple the fact that we're very pleased with the direction of the team. You know, over the last 24 games, the way that uh, we're playing, the way that our groups come together, the, the vibe that we have in the locker room, um, and that's special. Uh, it's hard to get in professional sports, especially when you go through a rocky patch and then you're able to get that positive momentum. And it becomes real difficult uh, to tinker with because sometimes you don't know how you get it. And when you lose it, you're not sure how to get it back. So. To, for the growth of our young group, um, I think it's important to be very careful with that. Thank you. Uh, it was reported that the reason why the matter waived uh, Daniel Hamilton is due to a technical error. What exactly? Yeah, um, you know, unfortunately, as some of these things come last second, the flurry of stuff, uh, there's a timing and sequence of things you have to have inside the league office in the queue. Um, and unfortunately, we got that in just a little bit too late. The rest of the season, you, you, you don't have two open roster spots. What would your plan be to use those spots anymore? Yeah, so um, we have uh, two weeks, 14 days to get up to 14 by league rules. Um, We'll just start taking a look at young guys, uh, more than likely, you know, take a look at guys in the D League, take a look at some of the guys that got waived, um, kind of like we did last year, uh, bring guys in on 10 day contracts, you know, see if there's a guy we think that's a fit for us long term and go from there. But it, it's a good opportunity uh, to do that for the rest of the season for sure. Were you surprised for a couple of your guys that maybe you weren't better offers out there than, than there were? Um, again, I don't really want to get into what offers were made and what offers weren't made. Um, I, I think what's what's important is staying with our objectives, right? Um, maintaining, we have five picks in this year's draft, so one of the things we went into this trade deadline was is we want to avoid getting more picks in this draft. We feel like you know, even adding five rookies to, to the team next year might be too many. Um, so when teams would come out and offer us uh, a second round pick in this draft, that, that wasn't appealing to us for what we may or may not have to do to get that pick. Um, so keeping our flexibility moving forward, not taking on money next year unless it was you know a great asset. You know we wanted to stay away from those. So you know it's it's a balancing act. So I wouldn't say surprise, but to, to keep with our number one objectives, the space and collecting positive assets, uh, we have to balance it out. And, and just to be clear, I don't want to make too much of the clarity you win, but can you just kind of go over that sequencing thing you, you talked about, the order of? Yeah, so the league shuts down the office to get trades into the queue. And if your trade's not in the queue, um, when you go to do another deal, uh, you have to have the roster spot available. So we've got the first trade in a little bit late, and when I agreed to the deal, unaware that we had that in a little bit too late, I didn't want to go back on my word with the other team after I told them we'd do something, and unfortunately that led to us having to wait the second play. Um, report out about the uh, Celtics field, are you able to comment on that? 
Yeah, I can't really report uh, comment on any of the trades because none of them are official yet. There's none of them have been finalized. Well, <clears throat> one of one of the questions that when you have ex kind of expiring contracts that don't get moved is the question of potential buyouts. Is there anything that you're looking at on that front? You know, I. I have not talked to any of our, our guys about that or the representatives. Like I mentioned, um, we really do, and one of the things that went into this, we're excited about the way the team's played over the last couple months. Um, so certainly not going to, it won't come from us. Now, if they come to us and they're, they're in a situation where they feel like they can go to a playoff team or they're not happy, but we're, we're, we are excited about the vibe we have and the way our locker room is. Those of you that are here a lot and see us, like it's positive. Um, so, so I hope not, but again, uh, we'll work with guys if that's the way that what they want to do. Hey, Coach, your question. I talked to you about this before. I asked uh, the coach earlier. Do you have any sort of concerns? Sure. What he say? I don't want to say something different. <laughs> <laughs> I think you probably know what he, what he said to this, to this question. When you win a game, is there a part of you that looks at the standings and worries that you won a game? Uh, not, uh, maybe the next one. Uh, <laughs> but no, when we win a game, listen, the growth of these guys and the fact that they're getting better, that, that's what's exciting to me. And I think that's what makes the future seasons exciting. Um, I get more upset when uh, other teams don't win. Uh, when they have 19 points leads in the fourth quarter and you think that you're going to get a team ahead of you a win and then somehow they miraculously lose by 10 and then that team in the stretch. Those, those can upset me more than our wins. Do you, do you use, I don't know how to pass this down to the way, do you look at a, is there a sweet spot in the standings though that you're looking to? You know, um, with the new lottery odds, it really has changed a lot, right? It used to be, you know, 25, 20, like it was dramatic. Now, not near as much. You know, obviously the higher up, the better every chance, but you're going to see more teams coming from 10, 9, 8. Last year we had Sacramento, I believe it was 7, jump to 2. You're going to see a lot more of that because those teams have a much greater chance to move forward. Um, so. I can't say this off the record to many of you, but anyway, <laughs> you're going to have people complain over, in my prediction, over the next four or five years, you're going to see a lot of teams, like 12 plate team jumping up to the top three, and you're going to have all these teams at the bottom screaming, this isn't fair, this isn't fair, that's just my prediction. With the success you've had over the last few years in the draft, of course, Trey Young being the top five pick, but getting the likes of John Collins and getting Kevin later in the draft, are you concerned where you may fall in the draft? You know, if it's not necessarily a top five pick this summer? No, I mean, listen, I maintained since day one that you, you can find talent anywhere in the draft. Um, you know, obviously you have to get lucky, but uh, you can find talent anywhere in the draft. And by get lucky, I mean, they have, there has to be talent there. But you can find it. Thanks, Travis. Thank you.